Okay, on this example, we're going to find the limit as x approaches 2 of this function. It's going to require a little bit of work, but we're going to get there. So the first thing we always want to do when we're evaluating limits is go ahead and first replace each of our variables with whatever value it's approaching. So in our case, we're going to go 2 cubed minus 5 times 2 squared plus 9 times 2 minus 6 on our numerator and then 2 minus 2 on our denominator and then figure out what exactly is this going to equal. Well, I think we have 8 minus 5 times 4 would be 20, plus 9 times 2 will be plus 18, and then minus 6. I think all of that works out to be 0 on our numerator, and 2 minus 2 will make 0 on our denominator. That's actually not a bad thing. Um, all that tells us is we need to continue going with this problem. So I'm going to replace um, what we have going on here, the exact same problem. And what we do know, because both the numerator and denominator equaled zero, that's telling us some valuable information about this limit. What it's telling us is x minus two is gonna be a factor of the denominator. That's pretty obvious already, but it also tells us that x minus two is gonna be a factor in our numerator. So our goal is gonna be find that other factor for our numerator. We have a couple different options of doing this. One option would be we can go ahead and just do long division. That third degree polynomial from our numerator divided by x minus two. However, I like this other method referred to as synthetic division. And I'll walk you through all the steps for synthetic division. Basically what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and we're going to put positive 2 out in front because 2 made the numerator equal 0 and 2 made the denominator equal 0. Next, we're going to go ahead and copy down each of the coefficients for each term from our numerator. So 1x cubed, negative 5x squared, 9x to the first power, and negative 6 for our constant. All right. Uh, if we had skipped a power of x, we'd want to put a 0 as a placeholder for that term. All right, next, the process goes to this first digit comes down, so the 1 comes down. And now we're always going to multiply by that 2 out in front. So 2 times 1 is going to make 2, goes in this next spot. From here, the process says we add. All right, you're just going to add vertically. So negative 5 plus 2 makes negative 3. Now we're back to multiplying. 2 from out in front times negative 3 makes negative 6. Now we're back to adding. 9 plus negative 6 is going to make positive 3. Finally, 2 times 3 is going to make positive 6. And as we add to complete this, we're going to get 0. Now let's talk about how to read this. That 0 at the end is the remainder. All right, and then we have our quotient is going to be represented by these coefficients that are in front of the remainder. Basically, we have 1x squared minus 3x to the first power plus 3. All right, and that's going to go in this next spot here. x squared minus 3x plus 3 is going to sit here. What you're going to notice as we look at this, we've done our factoring, so x, plus, x minus 2 and x minus 2, this common factor, can reduce down to lowest terms. And we're allowed to do that because we're uh, working with a limit in this case. Bring down what remains, the x squared minus 3x plus 3. And then finish this up by replacing each of our x's with 2. So 2 squared minus 3 times 2 plus 3 is going to be 4 minus 6 plus 3. So negative 2 plus 3 equals positive 1. And as we look at this, sure enough, that is going to be the limit of this function. So I hope this helps out as you get to kind of think through how synthetic division works. But you can use this on each one of these if you maybe have trouble doing, um, doing regular factoring. This is a great alternative to regular factoring. As long as you understand how to multiply and add and how that process works, it's really not that bad. Hope this helps. Good luck.